Hi and welcome. In this video I would like to quickly go through my Vim config that I'm using for Flutter development. At the beginning I would like to just point out that my Vim configuration is publicly available at GitHub. It's not perfect but you can use it to maybe learn a couple of things or see what plugins and what mappings I have if you want. I have also created for myself this cheat list which is a little bit messy, a little bit organized um, with a very different structure that I might be afraid that only I may understand, but maybe it will also help you a little bit to go through everything that I have set up and some of the default stuff in Vim as well over here. Without further ado, let's go to Terminal. Now you can notice right now that I'm running a PowerShell, so I'm on Windows. Recently I'm using Linux less because now we have the Windows subsystem for Linux in the version 2 that is pretty powerful and I don't really need the actual Linux installed anymore. The version of Vim I'm using is actually now Vim and I've made it work for both Mac OS and Windows and also of course for Linux. So here you can see that I have this typical .config then nvim as on Mac OS uh, directory structure inside of my user and here is the directory basically everything that is in it and we will have a look into it in a moment. So I've only checked if I have the latest version just in case I would change something in a different machine. So in order to see how the Vim config looks like, let's just use Vim for that. So my version is actually 0.7.2. I have a couple of plugins installed. One of them is the nerd tree. So I have this file tree over here, which I think will be very helpful today. First place to look into is always the init. Here I have some setup done uh, so that Python and Python 3 works on Windows. So in case we are on Win32 or generally on Windows, then we have some locations of Python and this was needed because some plugins or something was using Python and without it everything was crashing and I had a pretty bad time with NVIM at the beginning when I switched to Windows for some time recently. Then I have a couple of files sourced over here with different configuration and we will go through them in a moment. Then let's go into plugins for the beginning. So here is a list of the plugins I'm using. I'm using Vimplug for them. At the very beginning we have something to process Dart. I'm using Vim right now mostly for Dart, almost actually only for Dart. I think it would be good for a couple of other languages like C, C++ um, and probably also for JavaScript, TypeScript. So basically all of these languages that I would use command line tools anyway mostly for and I don't necessarily need an IDE. At this point let me just make it clear that uh, Vim is by no means, in my opinion at least, superior to IDE. If you learn your IDE, if you master your IDE, if you know all the shortcuts, you have your own mappings and stuff, then you can do everything as quickly in IDE as in Vim. More or less, modern IDEs like IntelliJ uh, and the VS Code at least, they have plugins which allow you to use Vim inside of an IDE. So in my other videos you could see that I'm actually using IntelliJ uh, or Android Studio but I'm typing everything like I would have Vim in the actual window. So it's like a connection between the two. It's a very limited of Vim. It's called, the plugin is called Idea Vim. It's very limited. It has only a couple of plugins, but then you can do everything with shortcuts from IDE and then type in in your text editor that is Vim-like, which is pretty handy. Then I have a plugin here for some syntax highlighting. Now here's some plugins that I was using, but I'm not using now. For the editing support I use COC, so this is actually also giving me uh, everything I need to, to start Flutter, to connect to a device, things like that, and also to open a debug uh, view or the dev tools, Flutter dev tools. So we can have a quick look if we type COC over here. We have a whole bunch of uh, different actions that we can do with it. One of them is COC command. There we go. And then you can see all types of commas that I currently have enabled. So CLC is pretty powerful. It works with plenty of languages and frameworks, not only Flutter. So we have Flutter Run, Flutter PubGet, Flutter Devices. This is of course not a Flutter project, so this will not work right now. But then if you're running Flutter, then you have a whole bunch of other handy things. And then you can map, of course, your own key mappings to it. For snippets, I'm using the ulti snippets and some predefined Dart snippets that like snippets over here. And I have this Vim snippet as well, so all of it combined gives me quite a lot of different snippets. Here I have something for lock 
highlighting. I mark this to see if helpful. Actually, it is pretty helpful, and the logs are pretty nice then. In Vim itself, here I have for Git, Git Fugitive, and GV. So I can also I have mappings for all my commands with Git, and then I don't have to type like Git add, Git commit, stuff like that. Actually, I'm usually typing Git commit anyway, but for many things I have just tools over here. And then we have this Vim signify, so it also adds handy information in case of something change. Let's say we made a change here. You can see that here are some handy little indications. Let's save that now. That these two lines were added to this file, and this is not yet pushed into the repository. So this is what it's telling us. Then I have this Vim airline, which is basically taking care of the status bar down there. And then we have auto pairs and Vim rainbow. This thing uh, make brackets work nicely so if you open a bracket it will close your bracket and this vim ribbon was also coloring uh, the brackets now the same thing here with uh, vim surround and then here are a couple of plugins for the nerd tree so for this thingy over here so we can have a tree we can create files over here we can highlight them you can also see that now i can see if there was a change in a file that um, this is not pushed to the repository so it's also working with git at this point then I have this Vim sneak, which helps me to find something in a file, just typing S and then plug, for example, and finds the next plug by typing just the first two letters. So this is just another way to find something in a file, because usually we have this um, slash plug, we can do that and it highlights everything. But we also can have just this S option and then just, it's simply a different way to navigate in a file, maybe not even for searching. Then we have FZF, which is for finding things. And this is working with ribcrep over here, which is pretty powerful. So we can type RG or just have a mapping for that. And then we can find something in our files. And this is extremely fast. You can have thousands of files here and it will find you in a file something that you look almost instantly. So this is really amazing how this plugin works. Like here we have 71,000 files and I don't know, let's find the void. And you see, done. It already found all, all the void instances everywhere in the 70 something thousand files. Amazing. Finally, I have multi cursor. So in case I want to highlight and then change a couple of similar places uh, or, or generally play in a couple of places at the same time, then I can use the multi cursor. And for the team, I'm using this um, groove box. So basically the team, you can see it's coming from here. Then I have a couple of other files over here. I have my mappings file where I'm mapping a couple of things, not too many, mostly I'm using the things that are predefined by plugins and by Vim for me. But for my lead, I have a comma defined over here. So some people do space, I have a comma, it works pretty well. Then instead of escape, which is pretty far on the keyboard, I can type JJ and go out of the insert mode. So if I go into insert mode by, for example, typing I, then I can now tap JJ, go out, or slowly J, J, you see? So you can actually type it pretty slowly and it will still work, but it's pretty handy because you always have your finger on J on the keyboard. Then you can see that I've also defined something for resizing the window because I found it pretty annoying to, to type these commands manually. So now I can do lit plus, lit minus, and it resizes the current window. Here are a couple of others uh, for managing splits, um, for mappings for FZF. So to get to history, I have leader H, for example. Here I have a whole bunch of um, different mappings for Flutter. So instead of typing um, this COC command Flutter run, I can just do leader FA and so on. So you can see I have a, quite a few of them, which makes my work faster. And then also a couple for Git, a couple for nerd tree and also quitting options and stuff like that. Then if we look into, yeah, if we look into settings, then this is my Vim setup. Uh, always you can just decide, for example, if you want to have wrapping or you don't want to have wrapping, if you want to have numbers or no numbers. And this is the file where I have all these basic Vim setup done. So in the modules, I have specific uh, configuration for different modules. So for COC, this is the default COC configuration copied from somewhere with also some mappings and stuff in here. And I, I've just learned how to use these things. Then we have something for Dart. So I'm setting, for example, I want the Dart star guide equals two. I don't even remember what it is, but this one is important. So I want to Dart format and save. 
if you assign one to this then every time you type something to save like v for example then it will save the file at that time which is super handy and then i have like a couple of other um, definitions for the plugins over here feel free to go to my repository and look into it so then for the snippets over here i just have a couple of snippets defined for dart for test and creating i had some problems with it here on windows so i'm not even sure if it works right now here i have some small application in flutter and let's just quickly do something in it for a moment to, to show you how vim actually works and that you can do things with this <laughs> it's it's the same like using an ide it's not much different i mean the main difference maybe is that uh, you you are discouraged to use a mouse as much as possible while the ide you can use it without the mouse but still it's not discouraging you from using the mouse so most developers constantly switch from keyboard to the mouse which is inefficient so to start an application right now in flutter i can do my reader so comma fa so we start flutter as you can see on top start flutter dev server then we can do comma fl to open the output the log output for flutter now we can wait for it to build for windows in this case in the meantime you can see that i can move in the file by for example a number of lines oh, there it is the application is started okay so i have my application on the site over here it still works you can still mess around with the framework as you could see in previous video if you don't know this application look at the abusing stateless widget and stateful widgets videos that's what i created this app for okay so we started now if we want to open dev tools then i have um comma flutter ft comma ft there we go and it says on top launching flutter tools and then it goes to the browser and here are flutter tools and one of the problems with vim is that it doesn't have a good integrated debugger there is some plugin but i didn't really get it to work the way i would like to in the rare occasion that i have to debug something i usually come to flutter tools over here the problem with DevTools is that every time you will restart the app, then unfortunately you will lose all the breakpoints over here and they still didn't fix that. But you can do a couple of things here, I mean quite a lot of things. Of course you have all the search options and so on, as we've seen before, you can switch between files or between splits. So you can see that I have two splits right now, but nothing stops me to, for example, go to the, the nerd tree here and then open another file in a new split. And then we can open another file in a new split and there is an unlimited number of splits, but it's getting pretty difficult to read right now. Let's close this too. You would think that it might be difficult to get all these handy operations that you have in an IDE, but that's actually not true because everything is over here with my setup. So if I have leader AW clicked, then you can see we have all these options that you get in Android Studio or in VS Code. We can wrap something with a widget or you can wrap with the predefined widget. You can optimize imports, sort, sort members. You can do all these stuff over here. Then the navigation for navigation, you could navigate using arrows, but this is really inconvenient. So usually Vim users use J, K, L and O, I guess. I'm not sure what is this because I have a German keyboard over here. Um, anyways, but you can use this for keys to navigate same like with arrows. And then you can jump, for example, 22 line down by typing 22J, 22 line ups by typing 22K, and so on, so on, so on. Then if you want to go to documentation or hover a documentation, you can go on top of something. And I have a shortcut here for Shift K. There you go. We have a documentation coming from Flutter and you can get your sources. So we have all the shortcuts needed for renaming stuff, um, for navigating to instances. So let's say we have this one and we can see over here we have different instances. Mm, where is this class used? This my state app, we can navigate through it, we can go to it and so on, so on, so on. So if you would actually get interested into that, uh, this video is just like a very bare introduction, then I can assure you that you can do everything that the IDE can do except of a couple of things so the debugging is a problem and also one thing that I don't like at Vim is uh, renaming files because renaming files at Vim over here doesn't or moving even files it doesn't take care of imports so if we have a lot of moving files around or renaming them to do then I would go to IntelliJ or to VS Code to do it and I would leave Vim for that but for pure editing and creating your beautiful UIs and so on with your templates or snippets, whatever you call them, 
and a lot of handy shortcuts, I think this is a quite a good and fast way to do software. All right then, then it was like a very short introduction and like an overview of my setup. Um, this is not the only way to do it, there is a million ways to do it, but if you're interested into the topic, then you can start with my Bing configuration and then go for that. And uh, there is a billion of different videos showing you everything on YouTube. So I'm not going to get into details with that. Bye bye.